Another tool for working with single exposure tonal balance in Photoshop is the Shadows Highlights Adjustment. This adjustment has been in Photoshop for quite some time, but it isn't available as an adjustment layer, so you won't find it in the menu at the bottom of the Layers panel. It's only found in the Image Adjustments menu, so to get to it you have to go to Image, Adjustments, and find it right here. Because of this, a lot of people don't know about it. The Shadows Highlights Adjustment allows you to make adjustments to the dark and light tones in an image while also maintaining some local contrast and enhancing detail in those areas. Even though Shadows Highlights is an adjustment, it behaves more like a filter in that it must be applied to a pixel containing layer. You could apply it directly to the pixels of the background, but I generally don't like to do that. I usually start by duplicating the background layer by typing Ctrl J or Command J on a Mac. Placing the Shadows Highlights adjustment on its own layer allows me to adjust the opacity or use a mask. I also usually begin by right clicking on the copied layer and converting it to a smart object. Now when I make the Shadows Highlights adjustment, it is applied as a smart filter, which means I can then reopen it later and further fine-tune my adjustment. If you've never used the Shadows Highlights Adjustment before, it looks like this when you open it. I always check the Show More Options box. Photoshop has some default settings for this adjustment, but I really don't like those settings. <laughs> they look really bad. So what I do is I set everything to zero and then click the Save as Defaults button so that the next time I open the adjustment, it defaults to no adjustments. Let's take a look at how this adjustment works. First of all, you can see that this image has a lot of really deep shadows and some pretty bright highlights. If we look at the histogram, we can see that I really haven't clipped any shadows and I might be clipping a little bit of the highlights in this very brightest part of the sky, but for the most part it's all there. It just needs some shadow and highlight recovery. I usually begin by getting my highlights set and then work with the shadow second to create the right balance. The controls for both shadows and highlights give you three sliders, one for amount, one for the tonal range, and one for the radius. I usually begin by bringing up the amount slider. You can see the effect that that's having. And then I'll work with the tone. This determines what percentage of the tones will be affected. Leaving it set at 0% essentially means that only pure white tones will be affected. I want the adjustment to come a little bit towards the midtones from that, so I'll bring the tone slider over, and you can see that now that adjustment is affecting more and more of the sky. Once I've figured the right tonal range, then I can further work with the amount to get the correct amount of darkening in the highlights. And as we know, when we darken highlights, we reduce contrast. So now the sky and the clouds look a little bit flat and muddy. This is where the radius slider comes in. By bringing up the radius, we begin to add texture and local contrast into the image. And how much radius I decide to give it determines what the texture ends up looking like. So I'll usually work with it, and it's different image by image, but I'll work with it to get the look I want. Once I feel I have the highlights set pretty well, then I'll move on to the shadows. Same thing, bring up the amount, then figure out which tones, so I want it to go more than just black, which is what tones I would be adjusting if I leave it at zero. So as I bring that up, I'm going more towards the midtones, and then the radius brings in the detail and texture through a little bit of local contrast. Now I can go back and further work with the tone and the amount until I get the feel that I'm going for. And I think I'm going to bring the radius way up and kind of feather out the edges of where it's being lightened. Finally, I've got a color adjustment slider which enables me to bring back some saturation into those areas because the process can leave things looking a little bit dull. And I can also work with midtone contrast. 
and in this case I actually want to turn midtone contrast down a little bit and that'll further bring up the shadows and darken my highlights. Once I feel I have it how I want it I can click OK and then I can turn on and off the visibility of that layer and we can see the effect of the tonal balancing we did. It does a pretty amazingly good job but if I don't like something like I said I put it on a smart layer so I can always reopen the smart filter and tweak my adjustments. I can also adjust the opacity of the layer to dial in just the amount I want and I can also add a mask to this layer if I want to mask the adjustment in or out of any particular parts of the image. One of the things I really love about this adjustment is the kind of detail and texture and dimension that it brings back into clouds. Let's take a look at a second image. Like before, I'll start by duplicating the background layer, 